according to new reports we have out that ENS is in a bit of pickle, one of the lead developers, Virgil Griffith, who is now serving 63 months in prison for his affiliations and working with uh, both Ethereum and North Korean conference. Uh, wow, this is a very hard one to explain, so let me back up a little bit. Virgil Griffith is an Ethereum developer who went to a conference in North Korea, and he was indicted by the U.S. for alleged allegations about participating with North Korea and helping them to basically funnel funds between the outside world and North Korea. He was also the developer of ENS. ENS is a decentralized internet provider that tries to make any website speak with another web website in a peer-to-peer -peer nature. Since he was the founder of ENS, or one of the founders of ENS, and now he's in prison, the project is having a little trouble keeping its project online and needs to have the passcode to this website called ens.link but they can't get it because he's in prison. GoDaddy, the website's also hosting with this, is not willing to participate, not willing to help after first agreeing to do so. They reneged on an agreement to renew the license for this website, ENS.link. ENS and now they're kind of unsure what to do. It looks like the ENS DAO, which is basically the controller of the whole ENS ecosystem, is going to start pointing to a different website, ENS.limo. But we'll see if people are able to port over their information as needed. So that is a big story with a lot of things going on there. Hopefully someone can throw a fact check in there if needed. Zach, I want to throw this one up to you. We have a weird story because there's, there's ENS stuff in here, which is really hard to grasp. Then you have Virgil Griffith, which is a very important story in the Ethereum ecosystem. And then you have like this weird part about crypto where like you can't use things if people are not around, right? If you lose your seed phrase, that asset is gone. I'll flip it back on you. So why does this story matter to you? What is the thing that stands out? Is it the unique uh, infrastructure of crypto that makes stuff like this happen? Or is it the broader concern about some other stuff? Why does it matter? To me, this story matters because you do get into a world with crypto where you can't use applications because people aren't there anymore. They've either moved on, they're in prison, in the case of Virgil Griffith, or they're deceased and you can't get those assets back. And so we are moving from a world of flexibility with institutions into a world of blockchains where there's code behind everything. And you can't break that code often unless you wanna do a rollback and get everyone in on that project. It's really hard to do. And so we are very quickly moving uh, away from the flexibility of institutions to blockchains. And that's going to have some implications for people who are holding assets and they're not used to that, right? They're used to being able to go get their assets from someone who's deceased in their family or being able to go talk to the bank and figuring something out. That's not the case. I mean, we're just making fun of the Board Ape Yacht Club losing their seed phrases, right? Well, that happens with, with Board Ape Yacht Clubs and there's no one else to go back and get that project or get that asset back. It's just gone, right? So I think there's some implications, like long tail implications for crypto assets people are not used to. And this is one story that highlights it. There's a bunch of other threads we could pull on this one, of course, though, like Virgil Griffith, big founder in the Ethereum ecosystem, talking about the repercussions for his imprisonment, talk about ENS and how it's not quite as decentralized as people might think it is. I don't know, a bunch of ways to take it. Wendy, I'll throw it up to you. It just goes to show we are still very, very early. There's so many problems that are coming out of crypto that do need solutions. And one positive aspect about this is it does present the problem that if a particular project um, has a dev or somebody involved with it that does have the keys, has passwords or whatever it is for that project to continue to operate, new founders, developers are going to have to come up with some sort of backup plan. But at the same time, they're going to have to be very careful on how they execute that backup plan because if any of that stuff gets leaked or gets put into the wrong hands, the project can get hacked or completely go under. So this is a very interesting story. Um, it's unfortunate that this person was gaffled up. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to see anybody do time over anything. But again, we still are very, very early. I think GoDaddy just doesn't want the smoke because in the article it says <laughs> that the lawyers were able to get them to renew the domain for a year, and then all of a sudden, without warning. They were like, nope, don't want to do it. And I think we think about the story that just came out with MailChimp doing the same thing. All of a sudden, without warning, crypto companies can't use MailChimp. And then you do a little Google search on Virgil, who owns 
the domain and you see like, ah, oh, North Korea. And then you also see tornado cash sanction because of North Korea. I think GoDaddy was just like, nope, not dealing with this, not worth it for us to get entangled in something that could potentially, you know, be sanctioned um, or get us into trouble. I think they were just like, hands off. We don't want to deal with it. And that's really unfortunate for the industry right now, but that's just kind of where we are. Yeah, last takeaway from this is the intersection of Web 2 and Web 3. Web 2, GoDaddy here in this instance, and Web 3 being ENS. Web 2 has its policies, right? They're very corporate. And I don't know what's going on with GoDaddy behind the scenes, but they agreed to it and then they backed off of it. It doesn't matter because it's their platform. They can do what they want. Web 3, you have a problem with you can't get to the original person who built this. The ENS DAO can't do much except for build a new hosting site. It's not decentralized enough to really deal with this. So we still have like a lot of lessons to learn and we still have a lot of problems to figure out before Web3 can really take off and build off of Web2. Zach, to you. Good chat. Good talk all around. Appreciate it. Thanks for unpacking it, setting it up. Give me the context. Give me the why it matters, Will. Get back in the mm -hmm. newsroom, my mm -hmm. friend.